there's a woman there in those days in your past. You used to wear some beads. But you have done away with this bead. You are no longer wearing bead. But now, the challenge you are facing now, you have no set to home. No single man can please you. No one can give you the kind of affection you want. This has basadai your career. You are just from one place to another, but right now you are tired. You don't know what is wrong with you. Please come out. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. You are there. You are getting old. And uh, this will tell on your children. So please, you are there. You are very big in your past. But right now, you are stopping using them for long. But there is a problem you have. You have no set to home. You move from one place to another. No one can give you what you want. Please come. Come on. Jesus loves you. You put on the native. Thank you. My name is Sylvia Ogbebo. I'm from Nigeria. What a man of God said that a lady was wearing a bead before. My school days, I was always putting on bead. I got married in uh, uh, 2012, one year old marriage, and uh, we broke up after one year with a child. The child is with me. Then now I can't stay with any man that can satisfy me. I don't see anything good in any man. Then I travel from one country to another looking for men. I've been to Dubai like five times, then Turkey, doing prostitution. Man of God, please help me. That is why I call you out. No one can get you out of this mess unless the person see the need of destroying that beat. Simple. And it takes the grace of God to see that beat. If 10 men kill, they cannot satisfy you. It's a curse. So you believe nobody can satisfy you in Nigeria, let you go to Dubai. Do you believe nobody can satisfy you? Okay, let me live my life and let them be enjoying it. Yet, you cannot be satisfied. It's a curse. So don't worry. You give testimony. That's why I call you by. It will be over. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is over. That was the message of prophecy from the anointed man of God. And the last word is, it is over. This prophecy brought about deliverance in the life of this sister and she is back here today to testify to the goodness of God in her life. The importance of prophecy in the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ can never be overemphasized. Remember all the words the man of God said in his prophecy are things that are very difficult for anyone to come out and talk about, to share with people. And today whatever you are going to hear from our sister is not meant to deride her but to give glory to God Almighty because confession is also part of deliverance. So right now she wants to share her experience and also share her testimony to the glory of God. So let us listen to her. Sister, once again, welcome you to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Can you please introduce yourself and let us hear your experience and your testimony. Emmanuel. My name is Aogbebo Sylvia Omo. And this is my mother, Mrs. Veronica Aogbebo and my son, Welt Osareti. Last Sunday, I was here with a lot of expectation. And while I was sitting, man of God came close to me, very close at a time he left. I was almost, the courage was almost gone. But when he came again, he said, if you have a, a, a grudge to a, to a brother that you should forgive, Tell the Holy Spirit to come to you and forgive. And immediately I sat down. I said, this is not for me. This prayer is not for me. It's too painful that I can't even forgive him. Then he walked down again. He came. He said, I said you should forgive. Then I stood up. I said, I've forgiven him. 
And at that moment, he mentioned my case, the prophecy. He said, a lady, she wore a bead before. Then you've done away with it. That that bead, you, because of that bead, you cannot make a home. It's spoiling your career. You can't stay with a man. Then uh, he said, it will affect your children. And you're getting old. And these are the things that have been sitting alone for the past three weeks coming all over me, that where is this problem coming from? So when he measured it, I ran out, and he said that my case would be set to that I will share a testimony. And really, what man of God has said is true. Like, those days when I was, then I was 22 years old, I, my neighbor called me and said I should follow her somewhere. Getting to that place is a spiritualist, who told her that they were going to perform some things on me, like giving me a mark on my private parts, then giving me beads as a seduction in my waist. Then all the while then, it was uncontrollable, then I got an admission. While I was in school, I was moving from one place to another. I go to Abuja, Portacourt, Ghana, doing prostitution. At the end of the day, my 300 level, I had an experience with a ritualist, which made me to say, no, I have to quit this before I die. Then, by the time I graduated in 2010, I came back to Lagos to my mom. That was when and I met my, the man I had my baby with, the young man. Then, I have some group of friends that I used to prostitution too. Then, I met with one of them. She was like, why are you like this? You are no longer longer pretty, you are looking so okay. And I told them that I'm not doing prostitution anymore, that I've changed, I'm not serving God. Then I said, this is not how to serve God, that they brainwashed me. That I should take them to Abuja, since I've been to Abuja before, I should show them the way where they should go. I told them I don't have money for all this. They now transported me down to Abuja. We were there in the hotel. I met with one honorable in the National Assembly, which I know before. He gave me some money, then we came back to Lagos. By the time we got to Lagos, they were like, what do you want to do with this money? I said, I want to rent a house where I can stay with my mom and then rent a shop for business. Then they now said, no, that I should travel, that I should go, go to Turkey, that they've already applied their visa. So I agreed with them, I applied for Turkish visa before I met my baby father and now took him. And throughout the period of staying with him in the marriage for that one year, it was hell that the beating was too much, even at nine months, that they already tested me and said, in, on Sunday, you will come and deliver. I went there on Friday. On Sunday, you come and deliver. That same Friday was when he beat me up. My child almost died in me. They have to be rushed to the hospital. They performed CS on me. After three months, he threw me out in the house. Then I was already serving. My mom was in the same house. He threw me and the child out, and I went back to my mom. I was there after the service. I went down to Abuja again. Getting to Abuja, and I met the same one of the group of girls that was also doing prostitution. I didn't meet the, get the job I was going for. She now said we should travel to Dubai. I said no, I have not traveled before. I don't even have money for visa. She now said she was going to pull the visa for me, that I should be looking for a ticket. That was when I now started the prostitution again. I started looking for money from tickets to go to Dubai. At the end of the day, the visa was out. I couldn't get money for tickets to Dubai. She now said she will pay for everything. Once I get to Dubai, then I will pay her. I said, okay. From there, we now went to Dubai. Yeah, she said that when I get there, there will be a queue. That will, by two weeks, I will be able to make up the money and pay her and gather my own money then to go and rent a house that I can stay with my mom and my child. What is the queue all about there? The men that will be that will be coming into the, 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 the house where the ladies are staying. So getting to the, uh, Dubai, I used to see Dubai on the TV. Dubai is a very beautiful place. But this particular place she took me to was in that place. They call it the Ara Market area. Like African people, they dominated that place. And I told her, how am I going to start getting money so I can pay you back immediately? She said, this is where I'm going to work. She took me to a room. The room, they, they have like four beds. They demarcated it with um, um, curtains. 
So men, they used to come in there, and they were, they, they not, not told her that I can't do it. She now seized my passport. At the end of the day, they said, without passport, I can't leave the country. So I had to start doing what she asked me to do with the stitches, because after the operation, the, the, it got broken, broken after the stitches. So I was still going for treatment, for dressing. Like man of God said that, even if 10 men kill, that I don't get tired, which is true. Because the men are always stripping in. So like how many men would come to you in a like day? Like 30, 40, you know? They were so always... And at that point in time, you were still nursing the, the, the wound of the op, uh, operation. Yes, you I still have the, the wound on me that is not healed. So after that, I came back. I met my mom again. In that same condition with my child, they were looking so kept. And now I said, no, this is not going to continue. I went to Abuja again, Port Harcourt. I raised the money, and I went back to that same place. When you go to Abuja and Port Harcourt, how do you raise money? Prostitution. Okay. Then I raised money. I went back to uh, Dubai again, that same place. That was how I was able to raise some money. I came back. I rented the house. I put my mom and my child there. So all the while... I'll be going and coming, going and coming. But last, I, like, I came back September, um, March 28th this time. By the time I came, I went last time, I saw, if I, whenever I see a group of people, I can count at about five or six around there that have used me and pay me. So all the time, I'm always very shy. All the time, I'm always very shy, so I was scared. Then I now moved to the hotel where I was now using social networks. I will always tell my mom to hold my child that I'm going to do business. Okay, you always tell your mom that you're doing business. Yes. So you mean your, your mother was not even aware that you were into this position? Yes. So by the time I came back, this time I'm sick. I have depression. I have uh, too much dreams. Dream like, but it, I can't even close my eyes. If I close my eyes, I feel I will die. Then... Uh, at night, I don't sleep. Daytime, I'm always indoor. And whenever I'm indoor, I'm always pressing my phone, social network, looking for me. When I came back, my son was really sick. I had to rush him to hospital. And then I started telling myself that, how am I going to continue with this? Too much loads on me. Um, it's too much for me. I'm, I'm depressed. I'm not sleeping. And that urge of sex is always there that, I want to sleep with man, and this my group of friends, really, whenever I don't see man, we practice lesbianism, I'm smoking uh, marijuana, cigarettes, and all that, so the whole thing was just too much for me that I'm asking myself, my child is growing, how am I going to continue with this? So I now uh, tell a friend that this is what I'm going through, I can't sleep, prescribe drugs for me. Because there's one they prescribe before pregnancy so long that I always take to calm my nerves. So I told her this is not working, prescribe another drug. She now say, I should, what I need is sex. That's the same lesbian friend. What I need is sex. That I should meet a man that will sleep with me and make me happy. That that's uh, that, um, anxiety. Most of the men that gives me money, they, is not, I don't enjoy it with them. But the ones that I will smoke marijuana, smoke all those kind of things, I'll rent a hotel, at the end of the day, I give him money. Those are the ones that I normally call. This time, I needed help. Then I now told my mom, this is what I'm going through. I can't sleep. My mom now confiding someone. The person now told her that there is a place that you should take me to. We now went there. Get it there. The woman said that they will bath me in the river. They will buy a lot of things. Then I'll sew white garments. We'll go to the river and all that. The woman said I should bring 80,000 naira, And I don't have it. So and now, we now agreed on 20,000. That was on Friday. On Saturday, a brother called me and said, try and go to church this Sunday. And I said, OK. That same Sunday, that was how I moved to church. When I came on Sunday, man of God made that prophecy. I was scared, kind of like, should I go out? But this is what is happening to me. I quickly ran out. And he said, I needed his help. I was not like, man of God, please help me. I'm depressed. He said, you are free. You will share a testimony. And when I came for the deliverance, 
I noticed that the whole thing that has been on me, like a load on me, has been relieved. Has been, you know, I'll, and when I got home, I tried to see, to my own self-confirmation of the deliverance, let me see if I want to sleep, if I can still really sleep this time. So when I lie on my bed, I started meditating. I, gave, I started meditating with the bracelets. I noticed that all the things that the man of God said, the preaching and all that, was coming to me. And the, the, the one the evangelist, Cindy, gave, she was like, no shortcut. So those things were coming to me that all the while I'll be going around the shortcuts. And there are so many things that goes with the shortcut. So that is not the right way to go. Then I brought out my credentials. I said, oh, these things can actually be useful. Then uh, I now notice that whenever I'm meditating on my bracelet, I can sleep. I can sleep, you know. I will just sleep off. It will be later. I will not find out that the bracelet is still in my hand. Then I will now wear it again. The dreams that I'm having, they are gone. And that sex urge that is always coming to me that I can't even resist the tiny time he comes, then I now try to lie on my bed and see if that same urge will come. No, it was not coming. Rather, the messages that I received before and the books they gave me that I read, those things were the one coming to me. So I believe that I'll be delivered. And since then, I'll be having a good sleep. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus Christ? You know, in the course of your testimony, you said you are a university graduate, right? Huh? Yes. And because of this spirit and the urge that has been tormenting you, you forgot all about your credentials and uh, your career. So after yes. your deliverance, you mean you now remembered your credentials? Yes, Explain. man of God said, he said, and this is clearly your career. Before, if you ask me, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? I will not have anything to say. I'm just dangling. I don't, I'm, sometimes I'm scared. Like, is this how the word is? But later, I now started, you know, those things were now started coming. Evil things that I studied were coming. Ideas were coming, you know. I carried my credentials. I was like, wow, this is actually for me. And a lot of people I met out there doesn't even have this. So why will I have this and still be doing this, so I was happy to myself. Okay, so now that you are delivered, tell us, do you still communicate with those your friends that you used to do this job of prostitution together? Do you still communicate with them? Do you know, that Tuesday when I got home, my all the while, like two days, I off my phone. By the time I on my phone, messages were coming, calls were coming, like, where are you? Think, like before I would sit down like, don't worry, we'll have food. God will do wonders. God will do miracles. And the miracle I'm expecting is for a call to come. Maybe I'll quickly go, make money come. Then these calls were coming immediately. Messages were coming like, what happened? We didn't hear from you and all that. So I was just deleting some. Don't call me. Then I blocked some on WhatsApp, the ones that used to send nude pictures and all that. I blocked them. And these are the things I was always scared of losing before. So I was able to reduce those things from my phone. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus Christ? So tell us once again, since you have been delivered last week and now, the depression, the urge to, to smoke, to drink, do you still have them? No, I don't have the, the mostly the smoking aspects like before. It's always coming, like whenever I think something and whatever I think is that same, my baby father saying that my that man of God said, forgive. Whenever I think those things that puts me in this condition I am, I want to smoke. So I just put on my dress. I go to any place that I know is convenient for me to smoke. But since then, I've not been smoking and the urge, that urge is no longer there. And I could notice that I'm now frequent at home. My child is around me. My children, they are happy, you know. And uh, with this mood that I am, I'm very happy. Once again, let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. We'll get back to you. In the meantime, let us listen to your mother. I uh, believe she also has 
some experience to share. Mama, you are welcome in Jesus' name. Can you please tell us your name and uh, share with us the testimony of your daughter's deliverance? My name is uh, Veronica Ogbe. And the lady beside you? It's my daughter, my last born. It's my last born. Okay, go ahead. So, on oh, Sunday, he can't come. He can't tell me, say, ah, she wants to go to church around 5 o'clock. He can't wake up. Come, they do work, they bath. I say, ah, where are you? He say, he wants to go to church. I say, hey, who is church? He want to follow us, go to church? He say, no, he wants to go to church. Who is church? He says, synagogue. Eh? Who they carry you go synagogue? He say one of his friends. I say, oh, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. My people don't go to church today. So now he can't go to church. We can't go our own. When we come back, he never come back. I say, hey, say, let me call him. Make I know whether not church he go, I be, he don't go outside again. So when I call him, he can tell me, say, then still there for church you. I say, oh God, I thank you. Since the way God delivered him on Sunday, changes is, it changed. Oh yeah, tell us those changes. That changes before. Cannot do anything for, for us. Immediately, just will drop back, go carry phone. Crack, 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 crack. Ah, ah. If I look and go, just the search phone like this, go crack, crack, crack. Say, if I look and go, say, oh God. You know, as I'm waiting, they find. Ah, ah. <laughs> so, I will say, this kind of way you they do. You know, go live and do what? Well, find something where we go eat. Later, you will go bed. When he can't wake up, we go bath around the go commands. So since a Sunday, this guy go market, he go clean house, he go do work. This baby go bath and go wash all his clothes. My own, he go wash him. He go go market, he go go buy something, he go come and cook. We eat. So That's she never do all those things before? At all. So anytime when she they go out, she they travel, go Dubai, where is the time you say she they go? Go for business. 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 And he never tell you the kind of business. And he never tell me anything where they do. That was Sunday when he can't come back. When the man of God deliver him, say, God, I thank you. Man of God, I thank you. You have heard from the mother testifying to the deliverance of the daughter. And she said she's so happy that God Almighty finally delivered her daughter. She never knew that the daughter was into this act of prostitution for so many years that each time the daughter was traveling out of the country or going out, she would ask her where she was going, and she would say she was going for business. And 24 hours, according to her, she's always on her phone, uh, browsing the phone, and she wouldn't know what exactly she was looking for, not knowing that she was always getting contact with men on the phone. But ever since the daughter has been delivered, she said her attitude has changed. Before now, she would not sweep, she would not wash anything, she would not even take care of the baby or take care of the home. But now she started doing all those things. Her countenance has changed. She's now happy. She doesn't go out anymore. She stays indoor, except she's coming to church. And she said, to God be the glory. Once again, let us put our hands together for Jesus. I am first, I will have something to say about Jesus that delivered me. Jesus is faithful and is, he's always ready to accept you no matter the, the sins you have committed. He's always there to tell you that I love you. And uh, to everyone listening to my testimony out there, I will tell them that if you are believing God for one thing or another, that you should always have faith, believe that some days God will answer your prayers. And to other people out there I've met, there are a lot of ladies out there, some had three children, two children, and they always have one thing or another to say that led them into this that they are doing. I want to tell you that that way is a shortcut, and there is always very, there is always sins that goes with that way. And you know, since you are graduating from one level to another, that is how I'll be graduating. Then I want to tell you that the ways that is very easy, which is the step by step, is the way that you find meekness, happiness, peace of mind. And I want to tell you that Jesus loves you. Come back home. 
Come back home. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? Yes, come back home. Because the Bible says homelessness is man's condition without Christ. And homelessness is a life that is devoid of Christ. When Christ is not in our lives, we are homeless. So come back home, those who are still in the wilderness of prostitution and all other crimes and vices that do not please God. So God be the glory. Now that God Almighty has set you free, we also want to encourage you to follow the way that you have discovered, the new life that you have found, and the love of Jesus that he has shown you walk in the way of Christ by making his word the standard for your life. And we pray that God Almighty will give you the inner grace to make his word a standard for your life. And the deliverance you have received will be permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, let us clap for Jesus Christ.